Welcome to Felony Friday, a presentation of the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here is your host, John Odermatt. Felons, friends, and freedom lovers, it is great to have you back here again with me for the 20th episode of Felony Friday. Without you guys listening, there wouldn't have been one show, let alone 20 shows. So thank you for your continued support. We have another great edition of Felony Friday today here on the Lines of Liberty podcast. And in case this is your first time listening, Felony Friday is a weekly featured show every single Friday on the Lions of Liberty podcast. And what we try to do is I try to put together a show where we can expose some injustice in the broken criminal justice system. And I think we have a couple articles, a couple news stories to go through today that'll do exactly that. So for today's episode, I will be welcoming in a uh, frequent contributor here at Lions of Liberty to help me break down some of these newsworthy felonies of the past few weeks. And in case you want to follow along at home as we're going through these, which I would strongly recommend, you can uh, find the articles and find links to the articles at lionsofliberty.com slash FF20. This is episode 20, so we make it easy. It's just lionsofliberty.com slash FF20. And I'll post links to everything that we're going to talk about right there. So without further ado, allow me to introduce my co-host for today, Mr. Howard Snowden. You probably uh, remember Howie back on, he appeared on Lions of Liberty way back on episode number two, which it's amazing to think was way back in January of this year. During that episode, we talked about uh, some controversial topics, talked about animal abuse, the FBI making that a felony. We talked about some legislation that made it illegal in Arizona, I think it was, to record cops. And we talked about much more. So I will post links to that in the show notes. Some of you might remember that Howie is actually referred to around these parts as the godfather of the Lions of Liberty because he was indeed the first one out of our crew to come to the Ideas of Liberty and through uh, Mark Clare first. And then Mark uh, communicated those ideas to the rest of us. And Howie is a big reason that the Lions of Liberty even exists today. So, Howie, welcome back to Felony Friday. Hey, John, it's great to be back. I can't believe you're already at a 28 podcast now for uh, Felony Friday. It seems like it was uh, just yesterday that I was on the second episode. It does. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, how fast the time is going, but it's flying by, man. So what's what, what have you been up to for the past 18 weeks? Oh, I just got back from Miami, actually. So I took a little break from spreading the uh, ideas of liberty and it just took a little bit of a vacation. But I'm back and ready to uh, talk about our criminal justice system. Awesome. Awesome. Tell you what, it was definitely a good time to go to Miami to go anywhere south because I'm sure the weather is similar to you. I'm in Pittsburgh and you're in uh, in Virginia. It's been cold and rainy and just, just terrible the past couple of days. Yeah, we, so. we just set a record for the like most consecutive amount of days of rainfall here, I guess, for the time of year. So we had like 15 days of rain. So I was definitely ready to get out of here for a little bit. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm looking forward to I'm going away on vacation in July. I got a couple of vacations lined up, so that'll be a good little – you know, a good little respite from uh, from the grind. And, you know, you got, you don't necessarily take time off from spreading liberty, but you go spread liberty somewhere else on vacation. Yeah, and, and I still listen to your podcast while I'm flying and uh, at the airport. <laughs> makes uh, yeah, it, makes the tra- exactly. makes traveling, traveling a little better. Yeah, traveling is a great time to listen to podcasts. That's when I listen to a lot of my podcasts, that and when I'm cutting the grass. So, Howie, let's, uh, as I, I think I talked about in the intro, I talked about what we talked about way back in episode two were some controversial topics. I think today for this episode, I mean, these are pretty controversial. And actually, we're going to, I think, talk about three different stories, three different things involving felonies to some degree. Felonies are, are crimes, controversial crimes. And with each of these things, they were originally brought up in our online, our uh, Facebook group, our private Facebook group, the Lions of Liberty Forum. And there was, you know, a lot of back and forth there, um, some uh, competing opinions. So I want to take an opportunity to talk about these. And also, if you want to get in on the stories, get in on sharing these stories and talking about these stories before we talk about them on the show, it's always a good idea to go online to Facebook, punch in your uh, Facebook search bar, Lions of Liberty Forum, our group will pop right up. And you can join and we'll approve you unless you look like some sort of crazy spam bot. We'll approve you pretty quickly. So definitely try to do that. We will welcome you in. The first story we have today is titled, Anti-Vaccine Parents Were Found Guilty in the Death of Their Toddler. Now, this story happened up in Canada, in uh, Alberta, Canada. 
and the couple has been found guilty of failing to provide their son with the necessities of life. He died of bacterial meningitis. And the parents did not um, you know, take their son to the hospital. They chose to uh, use natural remedies over you know, traditional medicine. And the ruling was that this caused their son's death. Now, the couple here, they say they were shocked by this ruling. And I guess the title is a little bit misleading, I think. And I think the title comes from the fact that this couple is saying that the crown, the crown, this is in Canada, the prosecution, we would say, in the United States is bringing these charges because they are anti-vaccine. But I think, you know, this story in itself is it's not necessarily about vaccines. It's about medical treatment and about caring for children. So with that, let's get into a little bit more of the details. Uh, The couple here, David and Colette Stefan, they were charged originally a year after their 19 month old son, Ezekiel, died. And now, like I said, they've been found guilty and they will be sentenced on June 13th um, coming up here in about a month. Now, during the trial, the defense painted this couple as responsible parents who were not aware how ill their child was. And they, that's why they did not rush him for medical treatment and instead tried to medicate on their own. Now, this child had been sick for two weeks with what the parents believed to be croup, which is, uh, I think, it's like a uh, coughing that normally children get under the age of two. It's a coughing, a, a thing in the lungs where they have trouble breathing, croup and the flu. And then he suddenly stopped breathing and the parents called an ambulance at that point, but it was too late. Now, up until that point, for those two weeks, the child was sick. They'd been treating him with natural remedies like smoothies, hot peppers, garlic, onions, horseradish. And then eventually, when the child did get very sick, did call the uh, call the ambulance and Ezekiel was airlifted to a hospital. Now, during the two week period that this child was sick, a family friend who was a registered nurse told the couple that she thought that Ezekiel had meningitis. Now, the mother researched this disease online. I know it's looking for things online. That's a recipe for disaster when it comes to looking for anything medical online. So the mother self-diagnosed, or didn't self-diagnose, diagnosed her son as having the less bad viral version rather than the more serious bacterial version. And she decided to treat at that point with echinacea to treat him. Now, the day before the toddler stopped breathing and was and they called the ambulance, he was so stiff that when they were taking him for some natural treatments at a doctor at an office that he couldn't be put in his car seat, had to be laid on a mattress. Probably at that point, when you can't put your child in a car seat, it's probably time to take them to a hospital. Now, the defense claimed during closing arguments that not a single witness called by either side who had seen the little boy said that he was so sick that he should be taken to hospital, which we can talk about that later. So as I said, you know, this is a really tough case. I myself have a daughter and, um, you know, it's unimaginable to think what it would be like to lose a child and to lose a child where I'm sure these parents probably do feel responsible for what happened. That's pretty tough in itself. And Howie, I guess I didn't say this at the beginning of the show, but each one of these three topics we're going to be talking about today, we're going to use the is this a crime and should anyone do time model. So Howie, let's just start out with that and then we can get deeper into this topic. So first off, at first blush, do you think this is a crime here and should these parents be penalized? Actually, I don't think this is a crime. I think it's more of a tragedy and I don't want to come off as someone who's anti-Western medicine or any of that kind of thing. but. I think these parents did what they thought was right. And I mean, the doctors are wrong a lot. I think we saw recently there's an article out about like misdiagnosis or medical mistakes or like the third leading cause of death nowadays. Um, And you see every day that you hear this is good for you. Then the next day that's no, it's bad for you. It's hard to know a lot. I'm not a big naturopath or like these folks were, but something I did read in the article I guess they were saying that people that saw the child, no one thought he was in, you know, like serious immediate health, like risk at any time. They needed to be like rushed for like emergency treatment. It's terrible. It's awful that this happened. I couldn't imagine how they feel. And I mean, I don't know where the anti-vaccine thing from the news article came from. I don't know if the government and their prosecution is bringing this up. If that's the case, I'm sure they definitely are trying to uh, make an example out of them. And I mean, I am all for vaccines, but I don't think anyone should be forced to do anything when nobody has anything like perfect knowledge. 
I think the anti-vaccine thing, it, it is misleading, but that's, I think that, and I'm not 100% sure of this, but from reading this, I think the couple and their defense is is saying that they're being targeted because they have, they have three other kids as well, and none of them are vaccinated. I think they're being targeted because of their anti-vaccine stance. I mean, and there was no neglect. They were trying to help the child. They just, they were doing the wrong things. They didn't know enough. It's unfortunate that this is the way things, this ended. I would hope that there'd be more education out there so other people don't make these kinds of mistakes. But I I just don't see it as a crime. I just see it as, you know, a, a terrible tragedy for these people. And I don't, I don't see how throwing these people in jail is going to make anything any better or I don't know. It's a tough call. It's not clear cut for sure. And I, I mean, I think I disagree with you on this and probably disagree with with most libertarians, um, libertarian leaning people in that, you know, I don't want the government to dictate you know, how I treat my child. I don't want the government to dictate if I vaccinate my child or not. But at the same time, I think we live in a society. This is a we, we're striving to live in a civilized society. And I want justice. I want people to be held accountable. And like I said, every case is nuanced. So I don't think there's any one no one blanket ruling that you can make here. But if it can be proven that these parents, you know, knew that their child was in a serious condition, and I think they should have known when you talk about that they couldn't put the kid in a car seat, they had to lay him on a mattress because he was so stiff. I mean, at that point, some alarms have to go off in your mind. And if the parents knew and they should have known at that point that they needed to seek some medical treatment, then they should be held accountable. Because at the end of the day, you know, this kid has rights. The parents have rights. True. The parents have rights. The government shouldn't come in and tell them how to treat their child. But who's going to stand up for the rights of this kid? He can't you know, stand up for himself. And as a civilized society, we have to have a legal system that protects the individual rights of every single citizen. And, you know, especially like a kid like this, who's really vulnerable and unable to advocate for their own rights. I don't know, you know, what the crime should be or what the punishment should be. It's a terrible punishment in itself, just having the kid die. But, you know, you don't want this to happen in a civilized society. It did say in the article, though, it was the day before he stopped breathing that he was stiff like that, had to be uh, laid on a mattress. And they were taking him to get medical help at that point. It was granted it was from a, a naturopath. I don't even know if that's how you say the word, because I would never go to see someone like that. But I mean, they thought they were helping and you would think that if that professional is not able to do anything for his child, that they would have directed him to the hospital. I feel like I don't have the full story. I don't know exactly what happened. Yeah, we don't have the full story, but I got something to think about. I'll agree with you there that they were taking the child for treatment. But, you know, at what point in time is something called treatment? I mean, back in the 1800s, you know, George Washington's day, they would, you know, bleed people out trying to you know, medically treat them. So if you bled a kid out today, or is that considered treatment? Should that not be punished? You know, I'm just speculating here, but. It's hard to say. And even as far as vaccines go, I wanted to clarify my position a little bit. I, I don't think I'm a total hardcore libertarian. Like I, I don't think they should be mandatory, but I think if you're going to send your kids to school or places where they might infect other people, that they should be allowed to be like, nope, you're not getting vaccinated. Your kid's not coming in. We're not going to endanger other people. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you had, you know, more private schools, a more private school model than all these public schools, I think private schools are probably do that on their own, don't you think? I do. And, you know, when I think about these kind of things, I realize that we are always going to have public schools probably for at least the rest of my life. And so I, I kind of look at things through that frame. I, I would before a law that if you're not vaccinated, you're not going to public school, though I wouldn't come right down to the, you know, knocking on the door and dragging the kid out and vaccinating them against the parents' wishes. If they're going to do that, they better stop taking tax dollars. I mean, not going to make you pay, you know, at least in Pennsylvania, probably models are different in every state. But in Pennsylvania, our local public schools are taken out of like the municipality or township you live in. Your taxes, property taxes are taken out to pay for your schools. So if that was the case, a lot like that was passed. And, you know, that's invading. I mean, you're, it's already, you know, theft. They're taking your money without your consent to give to public schools. Then on top of that, they were saying, unless you do this certain thing, unless you vaccinate, then your kid can't go to schools and we're still going to take They're taking money. my money. I don't have kids. I'm not planning on having them. So it's, you know. <laughs> have some kids. Get your money. I mean, honestly, I, I believe in vaccination. I wish everyone would do it. I just, 
we can't just run everyone's lives. We can put things in place to protect other people from their poor decisions, perhaps. But and even in this case, I wish I knew with exactly like 100 percent what happened when it happened. It's hard to say. So I'm just kind of taking this scenario and what generalizations can we make from it? Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, I did see they were trying to help the kid. They were apparently, you know, not very well educated to realize that he needed, you know, actual Western medicine that was going to be effective to save the child's life. I'm sure they understand that now. And this is awful, but without knowing more, I can't judge here. Yeah, I agree with you. We don't know everything. And I think that's kind of kind of the danger here, because a lot of the knee jerk libertarian reaction is to say, get the government out of my business. But I mean, that's not necessarily the whole story here. I mean, you know, we need to know if, you know, what these parents knew when they knew it. And at the end of the day, someone has to look out for these kids' rights. So and if the mother did think it was the viral meningitis that I, I guess isn't nearly as bad from what the article was saying, that uh, I really think they thought they were doing the right thing. And I hate I hate to see them punished after already losing their child for attempting to do what was right, they thought was right. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. It is a uh, there's definitely a debate to be had here, I think. But we'll leave it at that and we'll move on to another maybe equally controversial topic, which we also talked about in our Lions of Liberty forum in the past couple of weeks on Facebook. This is out of Virginia. It's in your stomping grounds, Howie, yep. probably maybe a different part of the state. I'm not sure. But so this was a, uh, a father who was trying to discipline his son, posted a video on Facebook of him first talking about, I'm going to discipline my son, and then turning the camera and videotaping him boxing his son. So this father, this is in Virginia, the son's 17 years old. The father, Tavis Sellers, um, ended up after posting this video, I guess he was originally charged. I guess he was charged, he, he turned himself in to Prince William County Police, and he was charged with domestic assault and battery. So I'm assuming the police saw this video he posted. And since he's been released on a 5,000 um, unsecured bond. So the video, the father posted it on Facebook. He said during the video that he's disciplining his son for misbehaving in class. And uh, it's a really weird video. I, I suggest to everyone, if you haven't seen it, go to Lines of Liberty, check it out. Um, he starts out, like I said, he turns the camera on himself. He's talking about his son misbehaving. I guess his son left class. But the father didn't have a problem with the son leaving class. He had a problem with him leaving class and then not calling him to tell him what happened. So he then turns the camera, helps his son put on his boxing gloves, puts his own boxing gloves on, and proceeds to beat the crap out of his son. And as he's beating the crap out of him, as he's you know wailing upon him, punching him, he's lecturing him on uh, on you know why he shouldn't misbehave and taunting him almost. And then at the end of it. You know, after he beats him up and his son runs out crying and he's um, cleaning himself up in a sink, the father brings the camera over and taunts him some more and says, you know, talk to your friends in class. You know, you're, you're not going to show off in class anymore. Are you? You're, you're crying now saying stuff like that. Really just, just, you know, sort of just really knocking this kid down, really just humiliating him. I thought more than anything, which was pretty terrible. So, you know, obviously the the question here is when, you know, what is discipline as a parent? What discipline is allowed? Where's the line? Is this a physical assault? So, Howie, do you think that this is a crime? And should this father be convicted and then punished here? Before I answer that, when I read the article, I thought, you know, I could see what this guy's doing. He, he wants to discipline his child. He's trying to, you know, teach him right from wrong. And also, he, he said he wanted to try to teach him how to defend himself at the same time. And I'm thinking, like, well, he wasn't really, like, injured or anything. But then when I watched the video... It was no, this, this is too far. This, this guy, I guess is probably a crime. Again, I I think it's, it's so close on the line and I understand what he's doing. I don't think he should do time. I think this is an instance where, you know, now that the authorities are aware of this, that they need to tell this guy, listen, you got to cut this out. This is, you know, you're, you're a little over the line. If you do this again, then you, you are going to be doing some time. But, um, I think the father had good intentions. He doesn't want his kid mouthing off at school. He's trying to teach him to be a man. He's trying to teach him to defend himself. He wasn't like injured, injured. He had a, a bloody nose and uh, like a, a split lip. It, it looked a lot worse from like the blood than it was. And it, it, it's not like the kid was like bawling, crying. I think he was trying to take his punishment like a man. It's 
you know, some cultures are different. Some people do things differently, but it did go a little too far and it, it, it can't happen again. That's now that it's come to light, he's got to be told to stop or you will be doing time. Yeah. It's a, uh... You know, Jason Stapleton talked about, I don't know if you listened to his show, Howie, but he was talking about not this case particularly, but about two weeks ago, he was just talking about, you know, parental discipline on his show. And, you know, there's a lot of libertarians who will, as soon as they, as soon as they hear about, you know, somebody, you know, spanking their, their child or, or anything like that, they'll, you know, go nuts and say, you're, you're violating that child's rights. You're, you're aggressing upon them. You're using force against them without their consent. Well, the truth of the matter is, you know, kids don't understand consent until a certain age. I mean, not a certain age, but until they're able to fully grasp what consent is, which for kids is all, it's all different times. I would argue probably at 17, this father's son here should have a pretty good idea of what consent is. Um, should have a pretty good idea if he wanted to participate in this uh, disciplinary act or not. I don't know if he, I mean, I didn't see the kid like begging, like, no, please, let's not do this. He just, it's like, okay. Probably if he said, no, let's not do this, his father probably just would have beat the crap out of him anyway. So maybe to me, usually in cases like this, to me, if I think it's, I think the, the deciding factor usually in my mind is, is the child being injured? Like, is there an actual injury? Like, uh, who is the, the football player with like the kid actually had like welts and stuff like split. Adrian, Adrian Peterson. Like yeah, that is obvious. If if you're injuring and wounding the child, that's abuse and you should go to jail. This is, uh, you know, a 17 year old, like uh, a split lip. I mean, like I, I do Muay Thai, you know, it's, it's not, I get, I mean, technically it's an injury, but you know, the kid's not really hurt. I, this is too far. It's easier to judge when it's a young child. If you're hurting the child, it's abuse and you need to go to jail. If it's, you know, a spanking, maybe it stings a little, but you're not physically like really harming the child. You're you know, more teaching them something so they're they're not going to hurt themselves in the future. Yeah. I, I <laughs> These are some tough you ones on, you picked today, Eddie. <laughs> I, I agree with you on, on both things there. I think that this father did cross a line and it's hard to really say what that line is, but – when you watch the video, I think you'll see what the line is, that, that he was over the line. I don't know what sort of punishment or I, I don't think he should do any time. I don't think the father should spend any time in jail, but he needs to needs to be penalized for this. Maybe a fine of some sort. Yeah. Maybe community service. I mean, a fine of some sort, and that's coming out of the, the kids. Really, that's going to hurt the kid because that's money coming out of his father's pocket. So it's less to... Us to pay for, you know, put food on the table and whatnot. So maybe a fine's not the answer. Maybe, maybe they should have somebody down in the uh, precinct box him and teach him a little, a little something. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting creative. I like that. I like that. Yeah. You have your toughest, uh, toughest cop there. Or toughest cop or toughest in. inmate. Whoever, whoever, whoever's their best boxers. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Or a volunteer from the community, maybe. You know, maybe somebody. But, I mean. Sees the video and wants to show this father that's not how you discipline. He, and I'm going to discipline you for disciplining your son that he way. He can't do this, but he obviously, like, he wasn't going all out. He wasn't trying to, like, really hurt his son. He, I think this was a poor attempt at fathering. I, this guy, they're just like those other people. They need to be educated. People need to understand what's acceptable and what's not. I mean, I hate to say that, like, everyone doesn't get to just decide that for themselves, but they don't. Some things are right and some things are wrong, and it's... It's not subjective. Agreed, agreed. So let's move on to our third. Is this a crime and should anyone do time for the day today? Um, and this one, equally tragic to the first one. Maybe not equally tragic, but definitely tragic. So this one has to do with a 27-year-old uh, guy who did heroin with his 19-year-old fiance, And his 19-year-old fiance died. She OD'd and died. So this, uh, the guy's named Jarrett McClassland and his fiance Flavia Carnitas, butchering both names, I apologize. Um, they did heroin together for the girl's 19th birthday and she died. And what's happened is they're charging this 27 year old guy with second degree murder. And he has a chance to be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And something that I, I didn't know, but um, there's a Washington Post article that talks about this case and other cases like it. And there's four states, New Jersey, Tennessee, West Virginia, and Louisiana, where prosecutors are starting to do this pretty r routinely, charging people who supply drugs to people, charging them with homicide. And in a couple other states, 
um, lawmakers have now introduced legislation to really do the same thing for ODs where they can charge the suppliers, charge the drug dealers with murder. I mean, this, you know, on the face, this is pretty crazy. But how what do you think of it? Is this a crime? Should anyone do time in, in cases like this? To me, out of the three stories you brought up today, this was the clearest for me to make up my mind. I do not think it, this was a crime and I do not think it should do time. And this article says, uh, there's somebody who's quoted, a uh, U.S. attorney, David Hickton, said, it's not different than a person who shoots somebody with a gun. It is completely different. We have two people who, as far as I know, were both voluntarily doing this. They both, you know, it, I mean, if this guy forced her to do the heroin, then yes, it's a crime. And yes, I, I would I would agree with these charges maybe. Or if it was... Uh, cut with something it wasn't exactly heroin and he knew that and didn't tell her and she died then yes then i would agree with that but if two people i mean the girl shouldn't be just the innocent victim i mean when people want something they're gonna get it and they're gonna do it and it's it's of their own free will i don't know if these people had been doing heroin for a long time um if so it's unfortunate that our our treatment facilities and the things that we allow in this country are inadequate. And there's um, treatments like Ibogaine, which have a crazy, insane success rate and things that are just illegal here that can really help people. Or, I mean, one of the, the big things is like, was it actually just pure heroin or was it something else or was it cut with something else? When we have a black market, you don't know. And that's responsible for a lot of the drug deaths and say, say things start to go bad these kids might be afraid to call for help. They don't want to get in trouble. They don't know what to do. And you might not react in time. It's just the system we have is just set up for these tragedies to happen. But I don't think that this person who sold her or gave her drugs that she wanted, that that is the same as shooting someone with a gun. Yeah. That's, I, mean, I, I read that same line and had the, usually when body. someone does heroin, they don't die. Usually it does happen. A lot. It's often, you know, if it isn't exactly what they thought or if they're drinking or doing other drugs with it, which is, you know, really dumb. But this guy had no intent probably to harm his girlfriend. I think they thought they were going to have a good time. Unfortunately, this was an awful, awful idea and a a terrible tragedy. But murder just gets sent to jail for life without chance of parole. Like, what if he was the one that died? They'd probably be like, oh, well, you know, the, the girl can't be responsible. Maybe she peer pressured him to it. I mean, we don't have all the facts, but if someone willingly does something of their own accord, you know, that's that's on them. It's awful life decision, but it was their choice, and someone else is, should not be punished, especially with their whole life for it. Yeah, this is – it's a consensual decision. I 100% agree with everything you've said, Howie. I don't want to live in a society – where this type of stuff happens, where, you know, somebody where two consenting adults can come to a decision and then come to a decision to ingest a substance. One of the people dies and the other person gets blamed for it. That's insane to me. And it's crazy to that quote that you read for that. Um, that what was that? That was a U.S. Uh, state uh, it just, attorney. It just said right? U.S. Attorney David Hickton. U.S. Attorney. So I'm assuming he's one of the uh, attorneys from one of those four states that are prosecuting these types of things as a second degree murder type charges. That's scary to think that guy thinks that way. I can't even wrap my mind around how somebody would think that way unless, you know, it's equal to shooting someone. If, if somebody says to you, why don't you, you know, why don't you shoot me? And it's consensual. And (laughs) something else the article said, which I think does play a lot into these types of rulings and decisions and like these emotional reactions that people have. They said, they called it the uh, notion of women led astray by bad men. Like, that's a good point. I wonder if, if this would even be uh, if this would be brought up if, if it was reversed. No, it probably, I, I really don't think it is. And to me, that's that's kind of sexism too. If a woman, you know, they can't make their own decisions, they're going to be so easily swayed by a man. I think people, you know, man, woman, whatever, are responsible for decisions and, and can be responsible for themselves. It's it shouldn't matter, but I guarantee that's what happened. So what's the difference between this here and say a, a fast food restaurant that's, you know, you have a, a consistent patron who's coming back there getting double cheeseburgers every day and they die of a massive heart attack. You know, through this logic, you would think that the fast food place should be held responsible, right? Right. And again, it's that 
person's choice. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody thinks that, you know, McDonald's is good for you. But I think some people might not know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're, you're, you're a lot, probably a lot of stupid people. You're out probably there. right. But uh, <laughs> do uh, if someone dies from alcohol poisoning, does like the liquor store get in trouble for selling them enough liquor that could possibly kill them? I mean, if you if, if like a, a small person were to chug like a fifth of whiskey, that that could kill them. The, the liquor store owner like guilty of murder. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's it's crazy. And I, I mean, I think what's leading into this paranoia and um, people, you know, adding on to adding on laws like this and trying to prosecute even more is because there is a huge heroin e- epidemic, which has been caused a lot by government intervention. Number one, with drugs being illegal, which feeds the black market trade. And also you have you know doctors who have been prescribing opiates just like crazy for, I don't know. Yeah. 10, 20, 30 years getting people addicted and then taking them away. Then what are people, I mean, people are addicted to opiates They're So they're going to find heroin in there. I guess, you know, I, I hear that you OD when you, I mean, it's not necessarily the heroin that makes you OD. It's something that was, it was mixed with, or you get a bad batch. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but. Well, you know, one thing that that's a positive sign is that a lot of states that are legalizing marijuana. A lot of people are able to successfully use that to t- treat their pain instead of having to use these opioid painkillers pain and end up getting hooked. Hopefully more states, I, I, I saw one state was saying like, well, we can't legalize marijuana. We already have this huge heroin problem. We don't need a huge marijuana problem too. It's like, well, in every state where they have legalized medicinal marijuana, all these opioid painkiller related deaths have plummeted and gone way down. So, I mean, that's one thing that can be done. Then there's these other treatments that are way more effective, even though they're illegal. I mean, they're legal in Canada and Mexico. Canada, since they have nationalized health care, which, I mean, I'm glad we don't have here, they can't afford to have people hooked on heroin. So they use Ibogaine because it works. But because it's a psychedelic drug, we like won't use it here. Which is crazy. <laughs> it's, it, I forget. It has something like, like a 75% success rate of curing people of addiction. And it's it's insane that we could help all these people, but we let them die. And we have the system is just set up that situations like this are going to keep happening and happening, and happening. And you don't blame the girl's like young, probably equally dumb heroin addict boyfriend. Like it's just ah, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I, <laughs> you, you know, you know, I think libertarians a lot of times get painted as not caring about people. They just say live and let live, which they do. But by saying that, it's going to make people have access to better options. With heroin not being prohibited, not being illegal, people will have access to treatment. You know, People will come out of the back alleys and will come into society to be treated if they are addicted, hopefully. And they won't be ashamed. They won't be afraid of getting arrested. They won't be afraid of getting arrested like, like uh, even sent to jail like Jared McClaslin did here for his uh, fiance, Odine, while they're doing heroin. I mean, if you're an addict, you're sick. You need help. You don't need exactly. to be thrown in prison and punished. We're not going to be able to help these people if we're just arresting them and punishing them. It needs to be like, hey, come in, admit you have a problem. We're, you're not going to get in trouble. What can we do to, to fix this, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if you saw, Howie, but Pennsylvania, the governor recently signed a bill which is going to – I'm not sure the, the specifics of it, but they're going to shift more to rehabilitating addicts rather than putting them in jail, which is a good thing, I think. And I, I posted that on my Facebook, the article to it, and somebody commented on it saying it's taxpayer dollars, you know, it's going to rehab or going to, going to them in jail. It's the same thing. It's no better, which I could not disagree with that more. I mean, I don't want taxpayer dollars funding either, but I would much rather have them going to, you know, help someone in rehab, government funded rehab, mind you, but still that's much better than putting them in jail. Right. Which I'm sure is more expensive in the long run as well. I'm sure you're right. Plus, yeah. you know, get this person back as a, a contributing member of society. You know, I'm not saying that we should be spending money for all these things, but if we're going to start cutting stuff, don't cut that. <laughs> how about let's stop uh, invading other countries or how about let's, you know, stop bailing out the big banks. Let's, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, what we're spending money on, what, what we don't, you know, things like this that can make huge differences in people's lives, they're, to me, not on the chopping block. I mean, it, especially when this is a problem that the government has, you know, had a huge hand in causing. Absolutely. See, it's all connected together, people. Liberty is everywhere. It's all intermingled. 
Howie, I think we're going to wrap up the show now. Thanks for coming back on. Really do appreciate your insights. Hey, Anything you want to – any party words for the Felony Friday audience? Uh, stay out of jail, <laughs> folks, and uh, McAfee 2016. There you go. There you go. From Howie Snowden's lips to – what did it say? God's ears? I don't know. Yeah, we got, we anyway. got a direct hotline. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap for the show. Remember, if you like the show, guys, please go to iTunes, Stitcher, leave a comment, rate the show, subscribe. Please also share the show. If you enjoy listening to it, if you enjoy listening to this back and forth here, share the show in your social media, share it on email. And uh, if you have an idea for the show, like I said, you can join our forum and you can submit it there, submit the article there, and we can talk about it. Or you can email me directly, felonyfriday at lionsofliberty.com. It's been great fun, guys. I always enjoy it. I will see you next week. This is John Odermatt signing off. Always remember to keep your head up and the fires of liberty burning.